Hey, everybody, it's Rich Toll. Thanks for tuning in to Toll It Talks Texas. It's Tuesday, January 18th here. It's episode 16. And did you guys see the full moon? Full moon last night, this morning? I did. Awesome. Really, really pretty. The wolf moon. Yeah, my buddy called me last night. He said his dog was going crazy. I said, well, it's the full moon. Remember the... uh, the wolves used to howl at the moon outside the villages in colonial times. That's how they named it, the wolf moon. But yeah, it was really, really pretty. So let's jump in here today because I checked out this website. Did you guys see this? Redballoon.work. Redballoon.work. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I just I kind of learned of it. Free to work. It's their logo or their byline, as we say. Uh, here's what they say on the website. It says, we connect employers who value freedom with employees who value it too. We envision a world beyond cancel culture. And I looked that up, guys. We're going to talk about the cancel culture. Kind of was more prevalent in August, September. But they say, we envision a world beyond cancel culture where employees are free to work without fear, that they will find themselves on the wrong side of their employer's politics, right? No agendas, politics, or drama, just work. That's what this red balloon dot works all about. I checked it out. There's 40 different categories of jobs, guys, insurance, real estate, software, all types of jobs. So if you are looking for freedom, more freedom, you're maybe an unvaccinated person, and you want to find work out there. By the way, remember that? I looked it up on uh, Indeed. I told you Indeed in this area, Plano, McKinney. There's really very, very few jobs for those that are unvaccinated. All right. So let's talk about this cancel culture because, it, you know, it's one thing to be called out. And it's also called the call out culture. It's one thing to be called out for, you know, racism or called out for, you know, anti you know, transgender comments and to basically pass judgment on other um, individuals. But it's another to be canceled for, you know, the COVID or the vaccination. I I believe so. That's a personal choice, whether you decide to put chemicals in your body or not. But in any event, let's let's see what this is. I looked this up on Wikipedia. Uh, Cancel culture or call out culture is a modern form of ostracism in which someone is thrust out of social or professional circles, whether it be online, on social media, or in person. Those subjected to this ostracism are said to be canceled. Right. Well, I was canceled like an old check from my uh, previous work in L.A. as a teacher uh, because I wasn't vaccinated. So, you know, that's one thing, right? It's another for, and I will say, I'm not going to pass judgment on anyone here because, hey, to each his own, and I'm not someone who judges anything. That's a yoga comment. No judgment, guys. I don't judge. It's your personal beliefs, and it doesn't really matter. You know, this friend of mine called me yesterday. He's an Italian guy, and he said, you know, Sicilians, he said, we've, we've always got to be, you know, the mob, everybody. I said, what, what, what do I care what people think? Because... I live my life, right? You want to live your life, be the best possible person that you can, mind, body, spirit, keep evolving that mind, body, spirit, but don't harm anyone. And that's my biggest thing in life. It's safety. Crime needs to be annihilated. You know how I feel about capital punishment. Crime. A woman in L.A., a young woman from UCLA got stabbed to death. What about the woman in New York City got pushed onto a subway? No, that's unbelievable. Crime is the biggest thing we have to combat in our society. You have to feel safe. You can't put people's lives at risk. Freedom of speech, yes, that's very important. But the ability to protect yourself against evil, there's evil out there, guys. That's my biggest thing. Okay, this kind of stuff, this cancel cult, well, who knows, comes and goes, whatever. But here, these are people that were canceled, right? Uh, Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling for making you know, anti-transgender comments. I don't, I don't know what the comments were. I didn't research the comments. Again, not passing judgment, just pointing this out. Doja Cat, something about her past and racism, not sure what that was. Again, I don't even know. I was just reading these off the site. Mistreatment of co-stars by former Glee star Leah Michelle. I don't know what that means. Uh, Jody Comer for having a conservative boyfriend. I don't know, that seems ridiculous. Ellen, I'm not even sure why Ellen. <laughs> what was the deal with Ellen? Uh, I think mistreatment again. Something about mistreatment of people on set. Mike, remember Mike Richards? 
you know, sex distance, sexual harassment, Mike Rhodes from Jeopardy. What about Joe Rogan? I mean, Joe Rogan, the king of the podcast. I mean, Joe, you know, they, he was too big to cancel, no doubt, uh, for his conservative political beliefs and anti-vax comments, which is ridiculous. I mean, Joe's awesome. You know, you want to cancel someone over their beliefs, their comments. What about Disney classics? Children under seven, they said you can't watch Dumbo, Peter Pan, Swiss Family Robinson. I don't I haven't watched those in so long. But it, anyway, Dr. Seuss, that was another one. I get, you know, Dr. Seuss was uh, subject to racial reckoning over insensitive depiction of Asian and black characters. I mean, Dr. Seuss goes way back in time. You know, that was the sign of the times, guys. I get it. You know, in today's society, things are different. Sign of the times are different. I mean, it's like always it's the sign of the times, right? What's, what's applicable today is not applicable yesterday or in the previous days. I mean, I see that in what I'm watching. When I was watching The Closer, all these shows um, uh, back in the early 2000s, right? I love those cop shows with, um, you know, Angie Harmon. She was another one, Rizzoli and Isles. Uh, again, those shows, you should see some of the lines that these guys say, no doubt. I mean, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be saying those lines today, but that was the sign of the times. What about Eminem? Eminem, what, rap god, one of the greatest rappers of all time. You know, they were talking about canceling him over angst-filled lyrics. Hey, hey, kudos to Eminem. Excuse me, on the Super Bowl with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. You should listen to some of Snoop Dogg's music back from the Chronic album. I mean, love, love that album. One of my favorite albums of all time. But Dre and Snoop and Eminem going to be on the Super Bowl. Way to go. What about Space Jam 2 over Pepe Le Pew and sexual harassment? I remember Pepe Le Pew, something about sexual harassment. Again, I didn't watch Space Jam 2, but I know Gina Carano, she was, I, I like her, like her as an actor. She was fired from The Mandalorian. I never saw The Mandalorian for her controversial social media po posts, whatever they were. And then we know about Uncle Ben's, Aunt Jemima, and Mrs. Butterworth's for portrayal of racial stereotypes. Again, sign of the times. And what about Columbus Day? I, I, I know that they changed Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, right? Remembering the geno genocide of Native Americans. Well, I mean, again, that, that, that was our past, no doubt. We took the country away from Native Americans. So, well, that's Columbus Day. And uh, here's something I want to say. This I read from August 31st. It was um, Harper's Magazine. You know, kudos to Harper's Magazine. So back in August, they published an open letter um, basically calling out, calling to do away with the cancel culture altogether. And they said it was censorious, which it definitely is. It's, it's definitely censorious. Now, like Twitter is censoring. Instagram censored me. I mean, yeah, anyone could get censored today. Well, what's Twitter doing now? You could, people can report or, you know, um, I don't know if you can cancel or suspend. I mean, Dr. Malone's account was suspended, but you could suspend based on misinformation, whatever misinformation is, because again, What's the narrative out there today? You know, you believe what you believe, people. So if you're a person that believes in the vaccine and all the information that they're putting out about it versus if you believe what Dr. Malone says in six months and people are actually negatively affected, which I've seen by the vaccine, but you believe what you believe. But anyway, Harper's Magazine was saying, put an end to it. And uh, mm -hmm. it's basically saying that it's intolerant of opposing views, and it's a vogue for public shaming and ostracism, right? And has a tendency to dissolve complex policy issues in a binding moral certainty, which it definitely does. So ostracism, good or bad, I mean, we're, we're back in the days wearing the letter A, we go, so all know, uh, uh, you guys know this from uh, back, well, I don't know, you guys are, I don't know if you guys have read a lot of books, but um, anyway. Hester, eh, that's a whole nother thing. We're not going to get into that. But ostracism, being ostracized for your views, for your opinions, for your beliefs, that's a bad thing. I believe it is. And um, what's happening today, guys, I believe this, there's a rigidity in American politics, and that's problematic. It definitely is. I mean, when you got a president, you know, calling out people saying that get ready for uh, severe illness and death, 
Uh, and uh, well, what about high-functioning democracy? Do we have high-functioning democracy? I don't think so. I think that's changed. You know, democracy is on edge right now. So we got to fix that. You know, what happened to all the love, peace and love in society, right, from the 60s? You know, I, I, grew, I grew up in that society. I talk about that in my book, by the way. Let's just jump right into that, drinking from the fountain of youth. That's a positive thing. That's what I'm all about, is empowering your mind, body, and spirit, treating yourself and everyone else with respect, being open-minded. I just finished McConaughey's book, by the way. I said I would finish at Green Lights. And um, in the book, there's a, there's a uh, well, you guys should read it. It's a good book. Kudos to Matthew. But um, uh, he's in a situation where there's a Muslim woman who's a prostitute, and there's a little argument go, that goes on between, you know, yes or no. And, and then basically, it's, it was about seeing it from both sides, really. Not passing judgment and taking a side, because he said, well, I agree with this. This is not about agreeing with. It's about understanding the other person's viewpoint. Be open-minded to it. You may not agree with it. It's like when, when uh, actors, they play a bad character, right? When you play evil. You don't have to embrace the evil, but you have to understand it. If you don't understand it, how do you identify with the character? So... You know, that's the thing. When actors are taking on a character, they have to understand it. They have to see the world from that character's viewpoint, not necessarily agree with it, right? Because if you agree with it, maybe you're crazy, because how could you agree with evil? So anyway, guys, let's do this. Three steps, three more steps to drinking from the fountain youth, because I have 30 steps, right? Three more. Step 22, love the five wise. Yeah, this is a very important one. Who are the five wise? One, yourself. Two, your family. Three, your friends. Four, your environment. And five, your God. Whatever, wh whoever your God is, man, woman, whatever. It's your personal choice. I'm not going to persecute you for having an opinion on who your God is. But most importantly, you got to love yourself. It starts with that. Right? You gotta love yourself. Then you gotta love your family. Who's your family? Your dog, your cat, you know, Spot, Fluffy, your family, your friends. And now, if your friends are ostracizing you or pushing you out of their social circle, they're not your friends. Get rid of them. Next, move on. What about the environment? That's huge, guys. I see it all the time people littering. Do not do that. Do not abuse your environment. That's ridiculous. And that applies to other people, right? If you do harm to another person, that's ridiculous. You should be harmed. It's, it's not fair. It's got to be, you got to have safety, right, and cleanliness. And, and your God, you know, why should we judge you for whoever it is that you put up on that pedestal? You know, me? Well, when I talk about that, we could talk about this. Love the five wise. Step 23, embrace failure. Remember we talked about that in the phobias. One of the top ten, number three phobia was for fear of failure. Can't ever be afraid to fail. Because from failure, you learn lessons. That's what life's all about, learning lessons. We go through this life one time through, about 80 years or so. I'm going to go to 108, as I say in my book. But you learn lessons. You keep moving on. You keep evolving. You keep becoming a better person. That's what I say. And uh, number 24, step 24, let it go. I say that in yoga all the time. Let it go. Don't have something hanging around your neck like an albatross that you're carrying around this extra weight. Let it go. I say that to my students when they first start the class. Stay present. Keep your mind on the breath. Focus on the breath. Don't focus on things that you're hang that you got to do later or that are bothering you. Don't bring that garbage in. You don't need to. Let it go, guys. Be free. Be light. By the way, speaking of being light, uh, you guys know I tried to gain two pounds. I was light, and I wanted to put on about a pound and a half. Well, I overshot the target, gained three pounds in the past you know, week or so. So no worries. Had a great breakfast this morning. Now I'm going to cut it back, drink coffee the rest of the day. Boom, I'll lose that pound in the morning. So anything and everything is possible. By the way, in terms of my workout, uh, I did the same thing I did yesterday. So if you want to know what I did today, go listen to yesterday's show. We talked about the full moon and uh, some cool stuff on that show. But um, 
you know, I, I did exactly the same thing. Again, you know, workouts are boring over time, right? So I did the same exact thing and we go back later and finish it up. So that's it for today. Drinking from the Fountain Youth. You got to do that, guys, because that's about you. That's about you empowering you and non-judgmental of you, right? If you didn't work out yesterday, no worries. New day today. Forget about it. If you sat around on a long weekend and you drank, you abused your body, you did all sorts of stupid things, no worries. Let it go. Forget about it. Keep moving forward. Speaking of moving forward, let's talk about the cryptos today, guys, because, ooh, is the crypto winter coming? Mm, that's what you're going to read about. Crypto winter is coming. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. But what does it mean to be a crypto winter? They said last winter. Now, we're talking about Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin's the big dog. Last winter happened between 2017 and 2018, where it went from 20,000 down to 4,000. It lasted you know, a year or so. Well, let's talk about that. Because, first of all, why would there be a crypto winter? Which is a price crash, right? It's common. That's what people believe. I don't believe it. But here's what they're saying. Yeah. Is Bitcoin an inflation hedge? And if so, is it dwindling? Okay, I, I get that. You know, inflation hedge meaning you don't want to own cash during inflation, right? If inflation goes up 7%, your cash just went down. Value of the cash fiat currency went down 7%. So, you know, in theory, Bitcoin is an inflation hedge. Is, is it? Yeah, it's got to keep going up. And what about this? With the Fed raising interest rates, right, because they're trying to combat inflation by raising interest rates, they're going to tighten up the supply, so to speak, and then push the rates down. Well, it's falling, right? The um, Bitcoin is now falling. It's falling sharply as we're bracing for the Fed to raise rates. Well, that is happening, but I think that's the fear, right? That's the fear in people. Bitcoin is a volatile asset, no doubt. These are riskier assets than buying blue chip stocks. By the way, Tesla's at 1060 today, climbing its way back. But uh, blue chips like Tesla. And um, what else? What else? Well, winter. Winter, they call it because it kind of takes years to recover, right? Okay. What about this? Regulation is forthcoming. Well, we do know that. One thing I don't understand is why regulate something strongly or annihilate something strongly that you're going to make a lot of money off of? I mean, I'm paying huge taxes this, this year based on my you know, profits from, from these cryptocurrencies. Why not let them exist? So what? It's another form of whatever you want to call it, whether you consider it gambling, which it's, it is. So what? You know, you tax gambling revenues off of people, right, if, if they have a lot of gambling revenues. So why not let it exist? Why, why stymie it? Well, but regulation forthcoming could, sty could stymie the development of the industry, no doubt. And this blockchain technology, it's questionable. Hey, I'm not a techie. I don't really totally understand this technology. What I do understand is it's not like gold where you can hold it in your hand, even though gold hasn't really held its value strongly. And it's a volatile asset. We, got, we know that. But let's talk about the returns real quick, because if you own Bitcoin, now, Bitcoin wasn't even on my radar until a year and a half ago. I was afraid of it, but now I'm not afraid of it. So back in 2017, if you bought Bitcoin on January 1st and sold it on the 31st of the year, so 12 months to the day, you'd go up 15 times your money. It was a huge year, right? You'd go up 15 times, up around, I think it closed, whatever, close to 20,000. Now in 2018, you would have lost three quarters of your money. So 2017, you would have went up 15 times and then boom, came crashing down. 2018, you would have lost three quarters of your money where it ended close to 4,000. 2019, you would have doubled your money. You would have bought it around 4,000 and it sold it around 8,000. You would have doubled your money. 2020, you would have went up four times, quadrupled your money from, 4, 000, from about 4,000 to about 30, 32, 33,000. You would have quadrupled your money. Um, uh, 4,000. Uh, what are we saying? 4,000 to 38, for eight times your money. And in 2021, you would have went up about 33%, right? That's where we know it wasn't really, you know, huge return. And in 2022, you're down about 10% because we started off the year about 45,000, right? So we're down about 10%. So 2017, 2019, 2020, 2021, you would have made money. 
2018, you would have got creamed. Would have lost three quarters of your money. That's the crypto winner they're talking about. Same thing here. If we start the year off at 45 and end the year at 22, that means you're going to lose half, half your money. I think the opposite. I think we're going to maybe finish the year at 60,000, so you make a 50% return. But hey, guys, what do I know, right? What does anybody know where it's going? But I do know this. You're seeing commercials about crypto, more people adopting crypto, more people taking a chance with crypto, more people wanting to make money with crypto. Speaking of which, where is it today? All right, here we go. Bitcoin, as we speak, 41730 as we speak. Bitcoin Cash, again, I'm looking on the Robin Hood, guys. Bitcoin Cash is 380 380 I sold some recently at 390 by the way. Just took some money off the table. BSV is at 108 that's going to make its way up, hopefully. Litecoin's back down to 141. It was up to 151. Uh, I told you I bought that at 154, so I'm taking a little hit there. Ether is at 3138. I do like Ether. And Doge, Doge is in the low 16s, but kudos to Elon Musk now accepting Doge's payment. As soon as Robinhood gives us the wallet, hello, Robinhood, come on, guys, give, <laughs> give us the wallet so I could use my Doge. Want to be spending it, but I think we're looking forward to a decent year. I don't know if you're going to quadruple your money, triple your money, whatever, double your money, but if you can go up 20%, 40%, that's awesome, right, guys? Hey, wherever you are, stay positive, right? Let it go. Don't get bogged down with what other people think, what other people say. Focus on yourself, loving yourself, mind, body, and spirit. Keep evolving yourself. Keep rocking your world. It's a new beginning. Every day you wake up is a new beginning. And remember, wherever you are, get your workout in. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Have an awesome day. Peace.